In this lesson, we're going to look at groups data in a frequency table and then how to make a histogram uh, using that frequency table. So sometimes when you have uh, a variable or whatever you're measuring that has a large range of values. So in this example, we've got 25 people took part in a general knowledge quiz. Their scores are recorded below. So we've got quite a few different scores here and it wouldn't really make sense to to take a tally of each individual score. So what we do is we group the data into what we call class intervals. So these uh, things down the side here are called class intervals. And I'll just write that down. Okay, so we might have um, an interval of zero to nine, 10 to 19, 20 to 29, 30, to 39, 40 to 49, 50 to 59, and 60 to 69. And it's up to you, um, the sort of the width of these intervals. So by width, I mean um, from zero to nine, or if you had done sort of zero to four or something like that. But it makes sense to do things that are in round numbers. Like I've got about, I've got 10 in each of the class intervals. I've got a spread of 10. So that makes um, a bit of sense with this data. It's also up to you how many class intervals that you have, but um, usually between 5 and 15 is a good rule of thumb. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so we're within that 5 to 15. It's also really important when you create intervals here that all of your data fits within uh, these intervals. So say I had a score of like 89. That wouldn't work because I haven't actually got anywhere that I could place 89 in these intervals. So you need to make sure that all the data fits in. You also need to make sure there's no overlapping. So if I had made this first uh, interval 0 to 10, that wouldn't make any sense because if someone had a score of 10, I wouldn't know whether to mark them on in, uh, in this class or in this one here. So make sure your intervals don't overlap. So I'll change that back to 9. And there shouldn't be any gaps in the interval. So I go right from 0 to 9, 10 to 19, 20 to 29, and so on. I wouldn't go 20 to 25 and then make my next one 30 to 35 and skip out a bunch of numbers. Okay. Um, now, right now we're dealing with discrete data. So people's results in a quiz would be discrete data. If we're dealing with continuous data, you know, height, weight, something like that, you actually set up the intervals the way I had it set up in the beginning. So you would have zero to, and then that would mean anything up to 10, anything up to the beginning of the next interval. So you would leave that blank. And that's because continuous data could be, um, could take on any value. So you could have 9.99 or 9.999. So that would go in that first class here. So uh, when you're setting up your frequency table with continuous data, you don't need to put like um, like a second endpoint. You just start with the, the lowest value that would go in and you put a dash and then the next interval would be the lowest value for that interval and so on. Okay, I'm just going to erase a couple of things on here so that we've got a nice clean uh, chart to start with. Okay. Now I'm going to put this data into the tally chart the way I did before. So the first person here is 22. So that would go here in between 20 and 29. 47 would go here and so on. Okay, so here's my completed frequency table. So I've got uh, one score in between 0 and 9, one score between 10 and 19, three between 20 and 29, six between 30 and 39, and so on. And this should add up to 25. So let's just check and see if I've done it correctly. One plus one is two, plus three is five, plus six is 11, plus nine is 20, plus four is 24, plus one is 25. So my total there is 25. Okay, so now we're going to look at how you would take this data and put it into your CAS calculator to create a histogram.
So to use our CAS calculator, we're going to use the spreadsheet and list function as we did before. And I've just put all of the data from those quiz scores in um, as sort of raw data. So I've got 25 different scores that I've uh, put onto my spreadsheet. So you can uh, stop the video now and put the data in so that you can follow along with the video. Once you've got all of your data in, we're going to make a histogram and we're going to do it the same way that we did before. So if you think you remember how to do it, it'd be a good idea to try and do it now. Otherwise, you can follow along. So we'll go to the menu and we're going to pick data number three and we're going to do a quick graph. So I'm going to click number nine. And here I've got a dot plot. So now I have to tell my calculator what kind of uh, graph I want. So I'm going to go back to menu and I'm going to say what plot type I want. So I want a histogram, so I'm gonna choose number three. And so now it's put all of my data into a histogram. But what I really wanted was to, um, to use the group frequency that I did before. So what we'd have to do is if you click control menu, Number five is bin settings. So that's going to allow me to change the class width. OK, so if you remember, the class width before was uh, from zero to nine. So that's actually 10 pieces of data to, could go in that. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is 10 numbers. So each of the each of the class widths were equal. So I'm going to choose number one equal bin width. And the width I want is 10. And alignment just means your starting number. So what was your lowest value? So my lowest value was zero because I started at zero to nine for my first interval. And then I'm going to click OK. And you can see that I've got a histogram there. So if you hover over each of the bars, you can see here that that says it's between zero and ten. And the square bracket means that it includes zero, but the round bracket around the ten means it doesn't include ten. So it's every value up to ten. And you can see the one there, so that mean, meant that the frequency was one, which is what we had for our frequency table. If I go to the second bar, between 10 and 20, not including 20, I had a frequency of one. Between 20 and 30, a frequency of three. Between 30 and 40, a frequency of six, and so on. Um, now I'm gonna show you how to change a few things just so that you can um, see your graph a little bit better. So if we go back to the menu, and if you go to number five, window slash zoom, um, first of all, if you pick, pick number two, zoom data, it will um, display the histogram in its entirety. So if I hit number two, you can see now I've got a full picture of that histogram. If you wanted to zoom in or out, you can obviously use um, number three or four by zooming in or zooming out of the data. You can also adjust the x-axis. We did this before with the histogram. So at the moment, my the, my minimum x value is at minimum. Uh, sorry, my minimum x value is at negative five. Uh, I really just needed it at zero, so I can change that to zero. The maximum and the the maximum. I think the maximum I went up to was sixty nine. So I can maybe just change that to seventy. And the highest frequency that I had, I think, was nine. So we can keep the the maximum y value at 10. Okay, so now if I hit OK, you can see now I've got a nice uh, clear picture of my histogram. And that's it really. So um, please make sure that you've taken notes on how to do this. You're going to have to be able to do that on your own. So putting your data into a grouped frequency table and then from there going to a histogram on your CAS calculator.